Hey everybody, welcome to my channel and welcome to my first video. I'm so excited. Thank you all for being here. So I'm just gonna hop right into it. Today we are going to be filming this look. I am calling it my Simple Glam for Beginners. It's sort of like an intro to a full beat, full face glam look. For those of you who maybe are not as comfortable with makeup, I'm gonna go in depth and show you step by step how I got this look. So keep watching. I'm gonna start off by priming the face. So I am going to use my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Matte Primer Stick. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna take this along basically my T-zone, wherever my pores are bigger, wherever I tend to get oilier. Look up on the forehead a little bit, nose, size of the nose, chin. That's pretty good. Go ahead and rub that in. Side note, I have already cleaned my face and moisturized it. Make sure you do that before you put on any makeup. That's going to give you the best result for your base makeup. Okay, so now that we're primed, I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> I'm going to go in with my Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation. I am in the shade 230. Well, I'm not, but today I'm going to be. I'm going to take a couple of pumps of that on my hand. And I am going to go, going to go in with this disgusting beauty blender. Don't judge me. And bounce this into the skin. You can see this is a bit darker than I actually am. This is my tan shade. But I don't want to spend the money to go and buy a not tan shade of this. So I either just try to keep myself tan or I use it anyways and try to pull it off. I'm going to get the ears. If you're going in with a foundation that isn't your color, getting your ears is a good little trick to making it look more like it's your color. Okay, now that we have a nice coat of foundation on the face, I am going to take <clears throat> a little bit more and I am going to take this down the neck and onto the chest. Um, this is a good habit, just generally. Oh, I'm also going to take it behind the ears up here because my hair is up. But this is just generally a good habit. Um, but it's especially important if your foundation shade does not match your skin, like mine today. You can blend, <clears throat> if you can get the neck and the chest and the face to all match. It just looks a lot better. People aren't gonna look at it and be like, oh my God, that's not her color. Yeah, so I'm just going to take this little bit onto the chest and kind of blend it out. I'm also going to just kind of go around my neck a little bit, just because I have my hair up. I don't know, I don't want to have any lines or weird, really pale spots anywhere. Okay. <clears throat> So now we've got our foundation laid down on the face. So now I am gonna go in and <clears throat> I'm gonna do a little bit of highlighting. So I'm gonna take my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. This is in the shade Light Neutral. And I am gonna go under the eyes and I barely have any of this left. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna start. I like to take my highlight along the like the side of my nose right here 
you can see like right there. And then I kind of work my way down and then I come across under the eye like this. Oh, you'd be able to see better if I had actual concealer in here. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of make this like a triangle. I just like to put the, so like a lot of people do a triangle under the eye, but I like to put the point right here instead of out here because I feel like it concentrates the lightness towards the center of my face, <clears throat> which I like. And then I'm also gonna lay around just a little bit of this LA Girl Pro Conceal. This is in the shade Ferris, I think it's their lightest shade. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on top just to lighten it up a little bit. I'm going to go in with my beauty blender and blend this out. When I'm working with the shape tape, I almost always do one eye at a time because it dries down so quickly. So I try and make sure I get in there and get it blended out before it sets. Because if you don't, it's very frustrating to try to blend out concealer that's basically already set. So now I am going to take my Laura, little bit, little, my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. Get a little bit of that in the cap. And then on a separate beauty blender, um, this is my beauty blender that I use only for powders. Um, I have this disgusting one <laughs> um, that I use just for liquid products and this one I use just for powders, which mostly ends up just being me setting all my liquid products. But the reason I don't put them on the same sponge is because I used to do that. And it ended up, <clears throat> like if you don't clean your sponge every single time, like, I obviously don't, you get powder buildup on there and then it mixes into your liquid products and it makes them set weird and yeah, it's just, it, it can really ruin your, your base makeup and it'd be really frustrating. So I don't mix them anymore. So I have a separate sponge for my powder. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit <clears throat> of this Laura Mercier setting powder, shake off any of the excess on the sponge, go in and make sure this is Grease free. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this. And I'm just setting this right away, just so I don't have any creasing. A little bit of creasing, a tiny bit of creasing under the eyes normal because we're human beings and our eyeballs move and there's skin there. So that's a very normal thing, but I try to, you know, just minimize that as much as possible. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other eye. Come down the side of the nose, make the base of my triangle there. And come out, you guys, I seriously need to buy more of this. Ugh. Okay, and then kind of make my triangle like so. Again, we're gonna go in with the LA Girl Pro Conceal and just add a little bit of this. And blend her out. Do the same thing again. I'm gonna load up a little bit of powder on my other sponge, shake off the excess, go ahead and give this one more blend. Then set. Okay, that looks pretty good for the eyes. So <clears throat> I actually am gonna finish the rest of my highlighting later. I just like to get my eyes done. I don't know, it just makes me feel better about where my face shape is going as far as highlighting and contouring. So the next thing I'm gonna do is cream contour. I have the Hoola Quickie Contour Stick. <clears throat> this is a little bit warm for contour. I would say if you're gonna do a cream contour, maybe go a little bit cooler than this, but this is what I have, so I'm gonna use it. Also, the cool thing about this product you turn it upside down, all the product falls out. So, so we're gonna start off, I'm gonna do cheeks, forehead, nose, and jaw. 
So for my cheeks, I like to start off where my ear, the top of my ear meets my face, basically. And I'm going to take that and draw. All right, y'all, my camera just very rudely stopped recording. So <clears throat> what I was doing is I was getting into the contour. Um, I'm like halfway blended, and that's when I noticed my camera started recording. So I apologize. But basically what I did is I went in with my cream contour stick. Um, and then I was doing my cheeks, my forehead, my nose, my jaw. For the cheeks, I started up here where the top of my ear starts, drew down lines to the corner of my mouth, and then I just went ahead and blended that out both sides. I drew a little half heart shape on my forehead, and I started blending that out, as you can see. For my jaw, I just followed my natural jawline. And then my nose, I <clears throat> went in slightly inside of where the natural bridge of my nose kind of is. For your nose contour, if you go, if you contour where your like nose bridge naturally is, you're just going to accentuate basically how your nose looks already. And if you like how your nose looks already, then that's fine and that's great. I just want a little bit more like, want smaller. I want, to, I want to be a little more snatched. So I brought it just inside where my natural nose bridge is. Also, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so and then the other thing I was saying while my camera was so rudely not recording me was when you're blending out cream products on top of your foundation, you want to make sure that you are bouncing like this and not dragging with, if you're using a beauty blender. If you're using a brush, you can you know, kind of buff it out, but with a beauty blender, you want to make sure you're bouncing and not dragging. Part of the reason is if you are pulling the products, you are almost like wiping them off and your color payoff is not going to be as nice as it would be. And also you risk, you run the risk of moving the foundation underneath, especially if you have a foundation like this that sets, um, this like dries down quite a bit. And if you are dragging on top of that, you are going to move the foundation. There's a possibility you won't be able to blend that back out and it's just gonna look patchy. So just make sure you're bouncing. Bouncing, bouncing. And you guys, I promise I am wearing clothes right now. I'm wearing a strapless shirt. I thought it would look cute. And then I realized when I saw myself in the viewfinder that I look naked. But I'm not. Don't get the wrong idea about my channel. This is wholesome family fun. So now we are all contoured, blended. Let's see how we're looking. Pretty good, okay. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna finish up the rest of the highlighting. So I am gonna take what little is left of my Tarte Shape Tape. And I'm gonna go right here along the jaw between my cheek and my jaw contour. I'm gonna go under the lips right here. This is a little trick I use to make my lips look fuller because they're kind of small. Um, and then I'm gonna go along the forehead. I'm gonna take it between the brows and just kind of over the brows this way. I'm not gonna take it up too high on the forehead because I find that makes my forehead look bigger and I don't need my forehead looking any bigger than it already does. Um, and then on a tiny, I don't even know what kind of brush this is to be honest, I think I got this like years ago. Um, it is just like a, almost like a really small liner brush. So you take this and draw a really little line on the bridge of the nose. And then I am going to go in again with my LA Girl Pro Concealer. Add a little bit of that on top. To lighten it just a tad.
Okay, that looks pretty good. So now, I'm just gonna go ahead and really blend this out into my forehead. Uh, I <clears throat> am really expressive with my eyebrows, and so I move my forehead a lot and my forehead ends up creasing, so this is one of those places that I really gotta, I blend this out and set it really quickly like I do with my eyes, otherwise I get lines across my forehead and I don't like that. Okay. So now the next step is going to be just setting the rest of our face. Again, I'm going to take that separate beauty blender that I use for my powders, <clears throat> and I'm going to go into my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, and I am just going to take this and blend this into the face. The reason I use my powders on a damp beauty blender is because I just feel like it like melts it into the skin. Instead of being like this powdery finish on top, like it can be if you use a powder puff or a brush, um, this I feel like just makes it look a little bit more like it's your skin and you look less, you just look less powdery. Also I find that my makeup lasts longer because it literally does like melt it into my foundation. And your girl has really oily skin, so anything I can do to make my makeup last longer. Okay, now we're all set with our powder. So the next step, I'm gonna take some Mario Badescu skincare facial spray with aloe, cucumber, and green tea. And I am just gonna give my face a quick spritz to basically melt in all those powders and give me a seamless finish. I have a big fan across the room, I should grab that. Let me channel my Inner James Charles for a minute and just fan myself. Is he gonna sue me? Please don't sue me, James Charles. Also, thank you, Cody, for leaving your fan at my house from Pride last year. I still have it if you want it. So now that we are all dry from spritzing ourselves, we're gonna go in and bronze. So I am going to take my Too Faced Little Black Book of Bronzers. I have had this for forever. My dear sister Leah bought it for me for, I think my birthday, I don't know, four years ago. It may be expired, let's be honest, but I still use it. As you can see, I've hit pan on quite a few of these. I don't even have my this one anymore. The shade I'm gonna be using, I don't know the shade name because Literally, this thing is so caked in bronzer, I can't see them anymore, which is gross, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to be going in with this shade right here. It's it's like the coolest toned bronzer in here, sort of a medium bronzer. Whatever bronzer shade you have, whatever looks good on your skin, just use that. It'll work. So then I'm going to go in with this Luxie 1010 Small Contour Brush. And I am just going to build up. A little bit of color. I'm going to start kind of along the outside of my face and I'm just going to go slightly above where we had our cream contour. This is just going to bring some warmth back to the face and it's also going to give us something to blend our contour into later. And I like to do this on a small brush just because I feel like it gives me more control of the product and it lets me build a more natural, natural-ish looking finish. Okay. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Then we're gonna go along the forehead. I'm gonna start at the hairline. And that is where I'm gonna apply the most amount of product and then I'm just gonna take it down on the forehead. Little tiny hairs keep getting in the way. 
I tried to hairspray them back, but it didn't work. And then I am just, I'm gonna take a bigger fluffy brush. This again, I don't know what brand this is. I got this a long time ago. This may be like an eight year old brush. Um, but it's just basically a big fluffy brush and I'm just gonna load this up with some bronzer and just take this down the neck. I'm also going to take some of this on the chest again so we look bronze everywhere and we don't look like we're using a foundation shade that is two shades darker than we actually are. Next up we are going to contour. The reason I bronze before I contour, I just like to have something to blend my contour into. Again, I feel like it gives a more natural finish to it what I like to do. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off that same brush that I was using. Y'all, I use, oh my god, I don't even want to show you guys this, but I use this disgusting towel um, basically to like wipe off the makeup on my hands, wipe off my brushes, clean my brushes, and it just kind of lives in my makeup room. It's so disgusting. Um, yeah. Comment below and share your grossest makeup habits so we all feel better about ourselves. Anyways, back to contour. We're going to go in with the NYX Highlight and Contour Pro Palette. This is, I mean, this is my favorite because one, it's affordable and two, it works. So I'm going to go in with the shade. I believe it is their Sculpt shade. It is bleh, this one right here, the one that I've hit pan on and is almost gone. And I'm just gonna get a little bit on that same Luxie 1010 small contour brush. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go below where I put the bronzer, just kind of concentrating in this like outer half of the cheek. And just blending this really softly in circular motions. So you can see that that's already just making our cheeks look a little more snatched. Same thing on the other side. Very light circular motions. And for contouring, you want to make sure that you're picking a cool tone shade that's, I don't know, I would say like I don't know how many shades darker this is than my skin. Just make sure it's cool toned and you're not going too dark. I would, when you're starting off contouring, I would err on the side of going too light as opposed to too dark because you can always build it up. Okay, so the forehead, I'm just going to concentrate this on the outer edges. I'm not going to take it down very much. Literally all these tiny hairs are just like attacking my brush right now. Okay, and then I'm also going to run this just a little bit very lightly along the jawline. Next up is brows. As you can see, I already went in and did one of them off of camera to save a little bit of time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this spoolie and I am going to go ahead and I'm going to comb all my brow hairs straight up. And I'm going in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow in Blonde. And I'm taking my Sonia Kashuk number 27 brush. I think this is I think it's advertised as an eyeliner brush, but I use it as an eyebrow brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna load up some product onto my brush. 
And I'm actually gonna just take my fingers and like squeeze the bristles together. God, look how white my hands look next to my face. Ooh. So now I'm gonna go ahead <clears throat> and I am just going to trace the basically bottom outline of my eyebrow. So I'm gonna start kind of a quarter into the eyebrow. And just go ahead and sketch out the bottom part of my brow, kind of following the natural arch of it. And then because I don't have tail ends of my eyebrows, I kind of get to pick where those go, which I actually like. And then I'm gonna take whatever product is left over on the brush, pull that through the front of the brow, and then extend it slightly past where my brow actually starts. So now we have the bottom of the brow sketched out. So I'm gonna go back in with the spoolie, comb all my brow hairs straight down. This is gonna give me an idea of where the top of my eyebrow is gonna be. So again, I'm gonna load up more product on my brush, squeeze that together, and then start about a quarter in and just go ahead and trace out the top of the eyebrow following the eyebrow's natural shape. And trying to make it match the other eyebrow. Trying being the keyword. And pulling any extra product through the front of the brow. All right. So now we have our brow shape basically sketched out. Next step, I'm gonna take my spoolie and actually just blend out this product into my brow. This is going to kind of help make those sharp lines look a little bit softer and it's also going to get rid of like if you have any chunks of eyebrow, chunks of eyebrow, chunks of product stuck in your eyebrow hairs, this will comb that out um, and it just makes the finish look a little bit more natural because pomade can make brows just look a little bit harsh. Okay, so then I'm going to get a little bit more product on my brush. And I am going to comb this through the end, tail end of my brow. This is where I want most of the product to be, so this is kind of where I'm gonna concentrate all of this. Because this should be the darkest portion of your eyebrow. And then I'm just gonna to continue to pull product closer to the front of the brow. You know, as I have less product on the brush, I'm gonna move closer to the front of the brow to give it a gradient look. And then as I get towards the front of the brow, I'm going to change my brush from being kind of sideways and brushing through this way to going up and down like this and making small hair-like strokes. In order to continue doing that to fill in the spot that we created just past the actual front of our eyebrow. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to blend everything out using my spoolie again. So I'm going to go in and I'm taking a little bit of this Tarte Shape Tape, putting it on my hand, and I am taking, this is the Morphe, I think it's, ooh, I think this is 47 one. The 7 kind of looks like it might be a faded 9, but I can't tell. It's this flat concealer brush. And I'm just going to get a little bit of concealer and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean up the bottom portion of my eyebrow. I generally try not to clean up the top unless my eyebrows look super uneven or I made a big mistake just because I don't want to go, I don't want to take liquid product and go over product that's already been set with powder because it just tends to move it and make it look patchy. So if I can avoid that, I try to. So go ahead and just clean this up. And then I'm just gonna take the smallest amount of concealer on this flat concealer brush and very lightly pull it through the front of the eyebrow like this. This is gonna give the front of the eyebrow a nice kind of gradient and it will like fade that color out. And this will prevent you from having square brows. Not that there's anything wrong with square brows. If you like your brows to look like that, again, it's your face. 
personally I like sort of the I guess ombre look I know some people also hate that so different strokes for different folks okay and those are the eyebrows all right so now we're gonna do the eyes <clears throat> so I'm gonna take again my tart shape tape this is why I'm running out of this because I literally use it for everything and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this as my eyeshadow primer you can use whatever eyeshadow primer you have if you don't have an eyeshadow primer just pick a concealer that you like like I am just make sure you put something down under your eyeshadow to give it something to stick to and also to kind of give yourself a blank slate to work off so you're not blending in colors to whatever I don't know color your eyelids are naturally pigmented as so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this good night is that the brand Jeez, the brand's Luxie I think the the brush is called good night 110 it's this like bulky shader brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and blend out this concealer You can also just use your finger. Usually I have nails. My nails look busted right now. But usually I have nails and so I just use a brush for this, otherwise I stab myself in the eye. Okie dokie, so now that is set on my eyeball. So now we can start playing with some eyeshadow. I am going to be using <coughs> the, let me wipe this off, oh god. It's a little bit dirty, but whatever. The Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. This is one of my faves. Oh my God. If you haven't tried out this palette, especially if you're a beginner and you're looking for a, a palette that has, I don't know, some neutrals you can play with, but also some really fun colors. Like this is honestly such a good palette. And the colors, most of them are really blendable. So I am gonna start out by going in with this. This is the Vera 35E brush. It's this big fluffy blending brush and I'm going to take the color. I think it's MFEO. I don't know what that stands for. Somebody help me. And uh, it's, it's this, this color right here. And I am just going to start by packing this on the brush and blending this into the crease. I'm just taking this into the crease. And blending it up towards the brow bone, not all the way up to the brow, but just up towards the brow bone. And I am going to take some of this and just blend it into the front of my eyebrow. I know that sounds weird, but for some reason it just it just makes the eye look seem a little more seamless. And I'm just going to add a little bit more product, just kind of build up this color. And then I'm also going to just take this color along my eyelid, kind of this half, the outer half of my eyelid. And blend that, make sure that I've got one seamless color going. Okay, that's very pretty. Here's so. Okay, I'm going to go back in with that Urban Decay brush that I used to contour my nose. I'm actually going to use the other end. It's this kind of dome-shaped, compact blending brush. It's still, it's pretty big. We can cover a good amount of area, but it's very dense, so you can have a little more control over where the color goes. And I'm going to go in with the color, I believe this is Pukey. It's a shade right here. I pick this up on the brush, I'm going to tap off the excess, and then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of blend this out in like a C shape along the outside of my eye. I'm going to start the outer corner, I'm going to bring it in, down like that, and then bring it up and out like that. And we're just going to keep going in that motion until I like the way it looks. I'm just going to make sure I'm blending this out into the crease. Okay. 
No, but I like to go, I don't know, I really like to build my eyeshadows. So I'll start off with like just a really small amount and then I'll just continue to pack on more color until it gets to the pigmentation that I want. I just find that that blends a little better. It does take a little longer, but I feel like it's worth it. Okay. And I'm going to take that fairer brush again, that first brush that we used, and just going to blend out this edge right here. Make sure the colors really blend together. The nice thing about this eye look is you can really do it with almost any eyeshadows you want. You start kind of, you know, like a light transition color, find a little bit slightly darker shade to kind of put in the outer corner, and then the last thing I'm going to do is put like a shimmer on the inside part of our eye. And really you can mix that up with any colors. You can do that with like pinks, purples, reds, blues. This basic structure of the eyeshadow you can really do with, with anything you want, which is why I did it in this, in this tutorial. Because I want you all to be able to take this and make it whatever you want it to be. So, the last thing I'm going to do, well, for this portion of the eyes, I'm going to take this Catherine Natural Cosmetics. This is in the shade called Sienna's Highlight. It's this really pretty champagne color. And I'm going to take, this is the Luxie 239 Precision Shader. It's just a flat shader brush. And I'm going to load the product up on both sides of the brush. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a spritz with my Morphe setting mist. Getting the eyeshadow wet is going to one, make it more pigmented and two, make it stick a little bit better. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pat this on to the inner corner of my eye and go, I don't know, about halfway into the eye. Kind of stopping where we where we were blending that first shadow onto the lid. And I also I'm gonna go just slightly up into the crease. I like to do this because I feel like it makes my eye look bigger. And I'm just gonna pull this out gently so it blends. And then just pat press the product on there. Okay. So now I am going to take that fairer brush we were using and just pick up a tiny bit more of the M, what is this called? MFEO and just blend this into there. Make sure we have a really seamless blend. And then pick up some more of Pukey and do the same thing and just blend this out. So now we're gonna go ahead, I'm going to take my Stila liquid liner. You can use any liquid liner. You can even just use a regular eye pencil, a gel liner, a black eyeshadow, whatever you have. And I'm just going to line my lash line, a very thin line along my lash line. This is going to help me place my lashes later. You can see I just have a thin line of eyeliner along my, my lash line, again, to help me with my eyelashes. Now I'm going to go in, oh boy, I think this is a, this is a Sephora brand. I think it's the Intense Black Eyeliner. Um, any black eyeliner will work. And I'm just going to line my top waterline. I'm going to go in with my eyelash curler. I just have this old Revlon one. And I'm going to curl my lashes. Next I'm going in with my L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara. This is my fave. I'm just going to give my top lashes one coat. My eyelashes are blonde. 
So if I don't do this, you literally will see the contrast of my blonde lashes against my fake eyelashes, and it looks crazy. So I got a coat of mascara on there. Next, I'm going to pop on my lash. Right there. These have been sitting out of their packaging, so I don't exactly know what they are. Um, I think they're the Ardell Double Up Wispies. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. I'm so bad about putting my eyelashes back in the container, like I just throw them on my makeup desk. Does anybody else do that? Just me. Ooh. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to use this. Um, it's the Duo Glue. I usually like to use the black glue, um, but all I have is a clear right now. So we're going to go in with the clear glue. Take my tweezers. I like to use tweezers when I put on my eyelashes. You can use your fingers if you want. I'm just going to put the thinnest line of glue that I can, focusing a little bit more on the outer corners because those tend to come up first. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead put my eyelashes on. So we have our eyelashes, or well, one of our eyelashes on. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the bottom portion of this eye. So I'm going to find my, this is a, I believe this is a Sonia Kashuk brush. I don't know what number this is. I don't know what kind it is. It's a really small, flat shader brush. <clears throat> and I'm going to go back into the Jaclyn Hill palette, go back into that MFEO shade, and I'm just going to take this under the eye. I'm going to bring this a little further down, kind of smoke it out. I'm just going to wipe any fallout off with this, that same brush we used to wipe off our reverse contour. And then I'm going to pack some of Pukey onto this same brush and I'm just going to concentrate this a little bit closer to the lash line to deepen that up. Okay, now I'm going to line my bottom waterline. This is the NYX Professional Makeup Faux Whites. This is in seashell. It's a really light pink color. I'm just going to go ahead and take this bottom waterline. You can also use a white liner for this. This is just going to make your eyes look bigger, also make you look more awake. It's a good trick if maybe you haven't gotten any sleep. Hashtag mom life. And then I'm gonna go in with my L'Oreal Voluminous Carton Black and add some of that to my lower lashes. Okay, so now, Last up of the eyes, I am going to go in. Sorry, that was loud. This is my Ofra highlighter in Star Island. This is, oh my god, the best thing in the entire world. I got this with my Ipsy subscription. I love it. So I'm going to go in with this Morphe M431. This is like a little, it's supposed to be like a, kind of like a bullet blending brush for a crease, but I use it to highlight. So I'm going to just go in and put some highlight in the inner corner like so. I'm also going to put some on the brow bone. Bring it out past the brow bone. And y'all that is one eye complete. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye off camera and I'll be right back. All right guys, so we now we have both eyes done. This is the finished look for the eyes. So we only have two more things left to do. <clears throat> so next step is going to be highlighting. And I'm gonna again go in with my Ofra Star Island Highlighter. 
And I'm going to take this. This is like an old Smashbox eyeshadow brush. It came in one of my palettes. It's just a little fluffy. Ooh, there's a little product on that. Little fluffy brush. <clears throat> and I like to use this to highlight. I'm gonna go along my cheekbones. Guys, look at this highlighter. It's my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna do my Cupid's bow. I'm also gonna go above the eyebrows just a little bit. And then, and that Morphe M431 brush that we use for inner corner and under the eyebrow, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take a little bit down the nose, just a small line, making it as straight as I can, which is not super straight, but close it out, and then just a tiny little dot. At the end of the nose, I'm going to go ahead and just take a brush and just slightly blend that out. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to set the face now. I set the face before I do lips. So I'm going to take my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist and just give my face a nice coat. Okay. So last but not least, we are going to do lips. With this look, you can pretty much pair any lip color with it, which is also another reason that I wanted to do this. First, give you guys kind of a starting point. You could literally do a black, a blue, a purple, a nude, a red, um, anything literally will go with this look. Today, I'm gonna be doing sort of a brown red color. So I'm gonna go in with my NYX lip liner. This is in the color Peekaboo. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just slightly overline my lips. I'm bringing the color just up a little bit onto the lip. I'm not going to cover my whole lip in the lip liner. But it's just to give something for the um, lipstick to blend into. Same thing, I'm going to line up top. Okay. Next, I'm going to go in with the Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lipstick. This is in the shade Gemini. No, and this stuff smells like, like a root beer float. I seriously get so hungry every time I use it. It's a problem. So now I'm gonna go in and just kind of clean up any spots that are a little, I don't know outside the line. So I'm going to go ahead and take the same concealer brush that we use for our eyebrows. I'm just going to clean up any parts of this that kind of went outside the lines. And I'm just using my Tarte Shape Tape in the smallest amount. All right, guys, so that is the finished look. This is my full, simple glam for beginners, an intro to full beat. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. Try this out. If you do try it, make sure to tag me on Instagram so I can check it out. I would love to see your work. Um, and make sure you know you like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you get notified every time I post. And make sure to go follow me on all my social media accounts. I will leave all of those in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Love you.